30 something years ago and I have to say it wasn't any brilliant insight or moment of incredible revelation. I had a house guest who was a dancer who um, announced after two days in the house that her hobby was cooking and could she, since I was giving her a guest bedroom, she was staying free in my house, she'd like to repay by cooking for me and some of my friends. And I said, well, I have a lot of friends. And she said, well, how many would you like to invite? I said, let's invite 20. And I don't know why I said 20, but it seems like a lot of people. And uh, so 20 came and they had the best meal of their, of their life. And, and I think probably since then it's still the best meal I've ever had in my life. It was incredible. It was an incredible cook. And then she announced, uh, everyone there said, don't let her go. Don't, you know, keep her. And, and, and I said, well, I don't know how long she's going to be in Paris. And she said these words, these words, I'll do this every Wednesday and Saturday as long as I'm staying here with you. And I said, well, okay. I said, all you people, you heard her. She'll do it every Wednesday and Saturday. Bring an envelope, put a contribution in, I'll buy the food and the drink, and come every Wednesday and Saturday. So for about six months, the numbers kept going up, and more people wanted to come every Wednesday and Saturday. And then she's a dancer, and she started getting jobs. So we had to move it to Sunday. And that suited me fine, because I thought the neighbors were going to go crazy if I do it twice a week. <laughs> and so we did it every Sunday. And then one Sunday, she couldn't do it, but she knew a woman who was a studying and cooking at Cardon Bleu or something, I don't know. So she came and cooked, and then the next week it was a guy who cooked, and then, and then suddenly it's guest chefs every Sunday. And now it's gone to almost 34, 35 years. Uh, 130,000 people have been to dinner. Uh, I take the first, uh, actually there are two categories of, of acceptances. There's, there's the first 60, which uh, um, I'll give people. Well, I'll do this later, but I have a, um, a form here, a guest form, and I take the first 60. What is this? That apropos of nothing. Uh, <laughs> I, the first 60 people can come. And then I say, after that, they're on the waiting list. And the waiting list, I tell people to call on Sunday afternoon after 4. And if the weather is great and it's warm, I have a garden. And I, so I can let maybe another 30, 20, 40 come. Actually, one Sunday, I let another 70 come. <laughs> yeah, 130. But I try to keep it under 100 because I don't want to freak out the neighbors. And, 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 uh, has anyone in this room? Not yet. I, not yet? Not yet. Okay. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, I live in a kind of like, in London it's like a muse, but in, in Paris they were built to be sculpture studios. And so my main room, which is about double this room, I guess, maybe a little bigger, and it has a window which faces north and goes up two floors, so it's lots of light streams in it. It's really beautiful. And then I have a private garden. And uh, so, um, and I had the great foresight, I must say, I give myself credit for this. Uh, the woman who lives up above me was born in the uh, upstairs, and she's lived there, she's 83, so she's lived there 83 years. Uh, mathematics, you know. And, uh, she, uh, she, um, I had, when I first started doing the dinners, I said, I want Madame Popper to be on my side. So I went up to her and I said, Madame Poubert, every Sunday night I'm going to have a dinner and there's going to be a guest chef and I'd like to bring you up a surprise meal. So don't cook on Sundays. So every Sunday I take her up a surprise meal. You know, keep the neighbors happy. <laughs> and then the people who live out across the hall from me, I said the same thing to them. And so, and then there's a couple of people down the lane and there's one woman down the lane who's an interpreter. She interprets Russian, French, and English. And one Sunday, I asked uh, someone who called. Uh, she sounded like an intelligent woman on the phone. And I said, oh, where are you from? And she said, well, I live in Massachusetts or Connecticut or something. And I said, what do you do? She said, I'm a professor of Russian literature. I said, oh, that's nice. And then I called the woman down the lane. And I said, you have to come to dinner tonight. <laughs> so I introduced her. And they, become, they bonded. They become friends. So. I live in this alley with about 20 people, and I've got 
lots of allies. No, they don't. <laughs> Otherwise, I could never have done it. I mean, when you think a hundred every Sunday invade my house and 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 come, and it's quite extraordinary. And then a few years, a year ago, I was on national public radio in America talking about a, it was a program called This I Believe, and I I gave a talk on that program. And the same night. Uh, I heard the program. Uh, I got a thousand people booking the same night, <laughs> and then, and then, as everyone knows, the the after eight, what which we have to thank you after eight for the hospitality night. I forgot to thank you and thank you all too. <laughs> uh, but the uh, 